Hello, my name is Brian Dick. I'm a software engineer, and this is my fourth YouTube challenge problem that I'm going to be solving. Uh, unfortunately, this problem, I could not get to work on uh, the website itself. Every time I try compiling, the website just crashes, uh, and I don't know why. Um, so I'm just going to go through how to solve it and what the problem is, and then kind of uh, some of my thinking throughout it. Okay, so let's get to the problem. So this is the double helix problem. Uh, you have two finite strictly increasing integer sequences are given. Any common integer between the two sequences constitute an intersection point. Take, for example, the following two sequences where an intersection points are printed in bold. So we've, we see we have these two sequences, um, and then they've got some numbers, and they have some commonalities between them. So in this case, they have 7, 25, 55, and 57. Uh, you can walk over these sequences in the following way. You may start at the beginning of any of the two sequences. Now start moving forward. At each intersection point, you have the choice of either continuing with the same sequence you're currently on or switching to the other sequence. Um, your current or switching to the other sequence. The objective is finding the path that produces the maximum sum of data you have walked over. In the above example, the largest possible sum is 450, which is the result of adding 357, 9, 2, uh, 9, 20, 25, 44, 47, 55, 56, 57, 60, and 62. So they just went here. So uh, let, let's kind of walk through the logic here. Let me see if I can zoom in any more here. There you go. Okay, so first, the, the, the kind of the idea here is you, you want to identify where your intersection points are. So in this case, we have seven. Um, so up to that seven, we have three and five here. So three plus five is eight. And then in this other path, we have one and four. One and four is equal to five. Uh, eight is greater than five. So we're going to go with this route. So we're going to start off this way. So we go three, five, seven. Okay, so then we hit our next section. So we have a nine and a 20, and then we find a 25. Well, 25 is also over here. So 29 compared to 11 plus 14. Well, 11 plus 14 is 25. 29 is greater than 25. So we're gonna keep going this way. So three, five, seven, nine, 20, 25. Now here we have the next section. So we have 30 and 40, which makes 40, or sorry, 70. And then we have 44 and 47, which makes 90, one. Uh, so 91 is greater than 70, so we're going to go down this way. So we're going to go 3, 5, 7, 9, 20, 25, and then drop down here, and then do the 44, 47, and then we hit um, 55, and then we have our next common number, either a uh, 57 or, uh, or the 57s, so we can cross over or stay on the same path. If we stay on the same path, we have 100. Uh, or if we cross over, we have 60 and 62. So in this case, the 60 and 62 would be 122, which is greater than 100, and we're going to pick there. So we go here, all the way to the uh, all the way to the 25. Go down here, all the way to the 55. Uh, cross over. Oh, whoops! I missed one. So the 55, we can cross over and get this 56. And then if this 57, we stay on the same path. Okay, so that's that's the uh, that's the logic of what's happening. So how do we solve this? Well, there's a couple of different ways you can solve it. You can solve it with dynamic programming, which aims to do the best choice it sees at first, and then goes back and corrects itself if there's different paths it can possibly take. Um, and that was the way I was originally going to solve it. Uh, but there's also another way we can solve it. We can solve it in n times log m plus m time. And uh, that's just through a binary search strategy where we keep two totals. So uh, as I said, the website itself is not working. So I'm just going to open up uh, this YouTube example in uh, Visual Studio. And uh, here I have the two sequences from the example. And uh, we know that this should result in 450 if it gets the correct value. And I just set up this here. Um, on the actual solution, you'd have to set up a way of getting the numbers using CN. 
Um, but uh, this is just how I'm going to set it up for, for time's sake. Uh, and then we'll go ahead and get into this. So we have two problems. Uh, we have the double helix portion of it, where we're actually going through these two vectors. And we also have the binary search aspect of it. And this binary search is going to be our log of m, which is the size of this array, uh, solution to uh, finding the index of where the next common value is. So uh, let's go ahead and start with the logic on the double helix. So first we'll define a couple of terms uh, or variables. We're gonna need a integer temp one, and we'll just initialize everything to zero. Uh, this is the total uh, on V one side. So this is what like that stint. So like, in, for example, if seven is our common number, this is what our total is up to the seven. And then we're going to go see what our other opportunity cost is up to that seven. So that's temp one. Um, int temp two, this is going to be that other side. So this will be the total on side v2. So in this case, we'd be getting the three and five added to temp one and then adding the seven, getting 15. And then we'd see what the total up to the seven is on this side. And if this side is greater, then we'll go with V2. And if this side is greater, then we go with V1. In this case, we'd go with V1. Uh, we're gonna need a int result. Um, this is going to be the total um, with the side we choose. So on here, our, we're gonna be adding whether it's temp one or temp two, we're gonna be adding whichever one is greater for this step. Uh, we're also going to want a couple of indexes. So index one is going to be starting at zero. This is gonna be cur index of the one. Uh, int index two is equal to zero, which is going to be equal to the cur index of the Two, uh, I like how I put a semicolon in the comment, just that meta. Uh, <laughs> and then contains, uh, contains index is, uh, I'm gonna set that equal to zero. This represents the index in which the, which a number exist in V2 that exist in V1. So this is gonna be a return of our binary search, basically. Um, so first thing that we gotta do is we gotta iterate through V1. So we'll say uh, for index one is equal to zero while index one is less than the size of v1, we'll increment the index one. So this is our, whoops, this is our uh, big loop here. And then uh, outside of the loop, we're just gonna return our results. So whatever the result is, that's what we're gonna return at the end. And then inside of here, what we're gonna first do, oops, what we're gonna first do here is uh, we are going to add the next val to our temp. So we're gonna say temp one uh, plus equals the v1 at index one. So this is our subtotal at this point. Um, and then we are gonna see, check if the current element exists in V2. So we're gonna say our contains index 
is equal to binary search. And we're going to pass into our binary search the vector v2. Uh, we will pass in 0 for the start or the leftmost side. And then we'll put in v2 dot size minus 1 for our rightmost side and v1 sub index 1 for the value we are searching for. Now we have to go implement binary search. So we'll go up here. So binary search is going to be simply returning the index of x. So like wherever x is in R, we are going to return that index. And if it doesn't exist, we're going to return a negative 1 to imply that it doesn't exist. Um, and how we're going to do this is we're going to we're going to implement binary search through the recursive method. So uh, we're going to first check to see if our R is greater than or equal to R L. So if our rightmost value is less than our leftmost value, that would mean that our left is further to the right than our right. So that means uh, we, we don't, it doesn't exist. We don't have it. So if uh, we don't go into this if statement, we are going to return negative one. Uh, we are now in, uh, we, we, we do not have this value in our array. If we are still good, we still have a right on the right side and a left on the left side, then we're going to find our midpoint. So we're going to call int mid, our middle, is equal to the left plus our right minus our left, all divided by 2. And what this is doing is it's going, it's going to be saying, hey, whatever our leftmost index is, we're going to add to that our rightmost index minus our leftmost index and divide that by 2. Now, why does this matter? Well, what this does is this enables uh, us to A, get the average between the two, but it also prevents a weird edge case when the left is equal to the right. When the left is equal to the right, we want this to return zero. And if we just did the addition of the two and divided by two, then that would be an issue. And if we did just the subtraction, that would also be an issue. So this is what uh, gives us the correct value in all edge cases. OK, so then we're going to say, well, if the array at the midpoint is equal to our x, then we have our index. So we're going to return a mid, that midpoint value. That is the index in which it lives. Cool. OK. Well, what if it doesn't? Well, else if, uh, since this is a sorted array, and that's important to note, um, it must be sorted for binary search to work, uh, we are going to say uh, the array at the midpoint, if it's greater than the value we're searching for, then it means that uh, it that means that the value x, if it exists, is going to have to be on the left side of our midpoint. So we cut our array in half effectively by looking at only the values less than this midpoint. So we search turn our search area into half of what it was. So we return, and this is where the recursive call comes in binary search of our array. And then we are going to keep our L value. But then our rightmost value is going to be the midpoint minus 1. So we have 1 less than our current midpoint is our rightmost value. And we're still searching for the same value. And there we go. Um, else. In this case, uh, the value is less than, meaning that it has to be on the latter half, the rightmost half of the array, if it exists. So we return binary search of R, 
comma, midpoint plus one, one greater than our current midpoint, still the furthest right that we know of, and x. Um, so eventually what happens is it goes all the way down until it either gets lucky and happens to be right at the middle, at the midpoint on a larger array, or it'll go all the way until there is only one value that exists between the left and the right. And at that point, it will either be this mid or afterwards, when it does this call, it'll either be R will be either one less than L or L will be one greater than R, which is the same thing, but like it happens in different ways. That's why I'm describing it differently. Uh, and then this will fail on the recursive call, which will return the one, the negative one, which will return all the way up the stack until it gets back to the final result back over here and goes into the contains index. Okay, so that's our binary search. So what are we gonna do with this? Well, we call it here to the contains index. And if it exists, so we're gonna say if contains index is not equal to negative one, um, then what we're gonna do, that means that we found it, we're gonna take the sum of all of the values up to the contains index from the current index that we're at in our second array. So what that means is we're gonna do a for loop for um, int i is equal to the current index, index two, um, and we're gonna say i is less than or equal to the contains index. Now, the reason why we're doing less than or equal to the contains index instead of strictly less than is because keep in mind the very first thing we do is we add this to temp one. If we did not add the contains index, then what would end up happening is we'd be one short. Um, so that's what we're doing. And inside of this for loop, all we're gonna do is we're gonna say temp two plus equals v2 sub index two. Uh, or sorry, sub index i, whoops. Um, so what this is gonna do is now we're gonna figure out what the values up to this point are. So in this case, we would be running the first one. The first loop goes, we check three, we add three to temp one. Um, we then go and see, well, is three in v2? And it, this will return a negative one. So we just keep going to loop two. So then we are on to five. So we add five, so temp one is equal to eight. Uh, we then see is five in V2? No, it's not. So we keep going, we get seven, that makes it 15, temp one is now 15. We then see is seven in uh, V2, we get, we get a hit. Uh, currently, our index two is equal to zero, so we say i is equal to zero, i is less than uh, two. So we go zero, well this is gonna add one, we get then our one, it's gonna add four, we're now two, which is equal to contains index. We have the seven, and we're gonna get 12. And uh, we're gonna be comparing, uh, so this will be, temp two will be 12 when we break out of this loop. And now we're gonna compare the two. So we're gonna say, um, after this for loop, we're gonna say, if temp one is greater than temp two, uh, then we are gonna say results plus equals temp one. It's the greater of the two, which in this case is what would happen. Um, else it's either uh, temp two is either less than or equal to. If temp two is equal to it, then it doesn't matter. So we're fine. Um, so either way, we're gonna just add results uh, plus equals temp two. Cool. Okay, so now we do, uh, we just need to make sure we update everything properly. So the first thing we do is we say, well, index two is now equal to the contains index plus one. Now this is because we went all the way up to the value of contains index. So the next time we're adding values up to the current temp, 
is going to want to be starting one after where we left off in our second array. Then we want to make sure we reset the temp values. So temp one is equal to zero. And oh, did I do something? Oh yeah, yeah, got a little random dash there. It's fine. So temp one is equal to zero. And temp two is also equal to zero. That way there's no unfair advantage when they go for their next, uh, their next loop around. Okay, so then um, let's say there's one more edge case here that we have to check. So let's say for a second that we hit the very end of the loops. And uh, we, we need to check, so we get all the way to the end of here, we're at 57, that was the last thing that's in common, and we go and check 60 and 62, and then we're at the end. Well, if we're at the very, very end, and we don't compare this side, well, this could have been 130, which would change the result. So what we need to do is, if this value, index one, is equal to the size minus one, or in other words, the very the index of the very last element, then we need to compare it to the other index as well, the, the other temp as well. So else if index one is equal to v1.size minus one. Um, and we're gonna just do the same for loop for int i is equal to index two is equal equal or whoops this index two is my goodness can't type index two is that's still not what I want I want i Derp. i is less than uh, v two dot size. So now we're going all the way to the end of the array and we say plus plus i. Um, and then here temp, temp two plus equals v two sub i, and then outside the for loop, uh, if temp one is greater than temp two, result plus equal temp one and else result plus equal temp two. Uh, and I think that will do it. We then get out of that for loop and then we return result. So we will go ahead and run this. Do, do, do. And we get here here the results. Here it the result. I think that's supposed to be is whatever. 450. Uh, can we not see that? There we go. Uh, here here it the result 450. Now we, just to humor our other edge case, uh, let's change this value of the hundred to uh, 130. So now we should get uh, 158, right? Because uh, this is effectively eight more than this. So let's run the debug window one more time. Bring this over here. And as you can see, here is the result, 458. So uh, I think that will do it. Um, if you have any more questions or doubts, uh, be sure to leave them in the comments below. I'm sorry I was not able to actually get this to run on the uh, website. Um, so if this isn't efficient enough and you have a lot of timeout errors, I'll revisit this problem and see if I can make it more efficient. But n log m plus m time uh, seems to be pretty good. Um, but I, I could be, I could just be wrong. So, uh, let me know how this works and thanks for watching. Subscribe and I will see you next time. Bye-bye.